Is it safe to send your silver and gold in the post or is it just a disaster waiting to happen? In today's video we're going to talk about sending precious metals in the post and some of the tips, hints and tricks that you can employ to protect your gold and silver. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and thank you for joining me for this postage tips, hints and tricks and also a little bit of a warning about things like insurance for your posting of precious metals. There's a lot of pitfalls which I've only just discovered recently having gone through quite a few scary moments with sending precious metals in the post recently. So I wanted to give this video to showcase a lot of what you might not have realised and think about when you are considering posting precious metals. Now of course a lot of what I'm saying here today relates specifically to the United Kingdom, to the Royal Mail, but I do think that a lot of what I have to say is applicable to whatever country you're in and whether you're using a national postal service, the USPS, or whatever country you're in, Canada Post, whatever it is, or even if you're using couriers like UPS, FedEx, DHL, whoever it might be. So there's a lot to get through today, but I'd love to know your thoughts down below. So please make sure you comment with your thoughts and opinions on posting precious metals and any tips and hints that you've got as well. Take a moment to hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying this video and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Now, as I said, I've had a few issues lately which has called into question some of the postage methods that I have been using over this last couple of years, posting not only my own poured silver when I send it out, but also coins generally when either I retail them or sending them on to people that have had them delivered to me on my behalf. And I was trying to tot up the other day, and I genuinely think over this last four years of doing everything that I've been doing and shipping out gold and silver, mine and other people's, I've probably sent an equivalent of about half a million pounds worth in value. Just just staggering when you really kind of tot it up and think about it like that. And touch wood, I've only ever had one parcel go completely missing where it never turned up at all and we had to have an insurance payout. It was an international parcel and I'm very happy to say that it was completely paid out. So. You know, there are some positives to be said by this. If you do things right, if you have a good attitude and a good approach to packaging, and we'll talk about packaging as we go throughout this video, and also just generally how you label your parcel and package within the parcel as well, and the types of services you use, I think generally speaking you can be very safe when posting gold and silver in the, the national or just domestic postage uh, sort of systems. So, where is the best place to start? I think the best place to start is to examine what kind of postage service you're going to be using. Now for us in the UK, there are basically three options if you're just sending domestically. There's unsigned for, signed for, and then a special delivery. Unsigned for is kind of, as it says really, you just send it and it should arrive, theoretically, but you have no real recourse to work out whether it, whether it has. Uh, or where it is if it hasn't. Sign for, it's really very much just whether or not it's arrived or not. It can't be tracked. Um, it's just a way of being able to kind of prove whether or not it's been delivered. Now that's quite useful if you're a commercial seller, if you're selling things and you send something unsigned for, you just don't know whether or not the customer is telling the truth or not. And I know that sounds like a horrible thing to say, but genuinely, you know, there, there are gonna be some negative apples out there that will try and fleece people if they, you know, see you posting things, especially certainly in sort of today's world. So, you know, it, it's sad to say, but it does happen. So protect yourself as best as possible, I would say, and pretty much never send anything that's not signed for. However, there is a little pitfall that needs to be highlighted for this particular service, signed for delivery. It comes with this wonderful guarantee of £50. You say £50, that's fantastic. That's going to cover at least three ounces worth of silver, maybe two ounces, depending on where spot prices are. Um, but it doesn't cover precious metals. You need to be very aware of that. Read the T's and C's for all of your postal services. That's the first tip and hint that I'm going to give you today. Whether you're UK based or whether you're sending uh, in a different country, read the T's and C's and make sure that the service that you're using covers precious metals. And if you're not sure about that, ask at the counter or contact the postal service to make sure. There is a service, thankfully, here in the United Kingdom that does cover precious metals and cash and things like that of value. And that is special delivery. And that is the primary service by which I send the majority of my precious metals within the UK. There are a few occasions where I'm happy to take that financial risk for sign for, and it's gonna be down to each individual personal circumstances. We'll talk a little bit about 
that side of things as we go. I mean, there's a huge amount to cover in today's video, but special delivery, that's the best one. You go, yeah, fantastic. It can cover 500 pounds of standard, 1,000 pounds for enhanced cover, and 2,500 pounds in enhanced cover. But this is probably the biggest pitfall that I have found about this service. If your parcel is deemed to be valued more than 2,500, and we're talking just a penny over, and it invalidates the entire insurance. Now, I've only recently discovered this because if you have been following my channel for a while, we sent a whole bunch of my own hand poured silver up to the Edinburgh assay office, and the parcel was looking like it might have been missing, and it was supposedly disposed of. It did turn up and everything was fine, but of course I was thinking in the back of my head, oh, I'm gonna have to go through a claim, and somebody then pointed out to me on the YouTube comment section that uh, that would not actually be covered because the amount of silver that I'd said that was in the parcel was way in excess of £2,500 in value. And that is the crux of the matter. So sending more than £2,500, completely pointless if you're gonna pay for that insurance cover. So there are other options, of course, that you can look to take up. You can get your own uh, goods in transit insurance if you're a seller, if you're a commercial seller. Um, you know, you can definitely, there are ways to do this, but that's an expensive type of policy. Um, it really is. Now, of course, if you put, you know, £3,000 worth of silver in your parcel and it does go missing and you have to make a claim and you try and sneakily say 2500 was the value. No, of course, 2500 that was only how much was in it. And they kind of find out that's insurance fraud and that's obviously not a good thing. Now, there's always, uh, this is going to be where I have a go at kind of insurance companies generally. Uh, you know, insurance is designed such that they make money when they don't pay out. So of course, anything that insurers can do not to pay out is gonna make them money. And for me, it's always, it's a difficult one because for me, if I'm posting regularly lots of things up to the Edinburgh Asset Office, like this kilo bar here, for example, it's got a kilo of silver in it. That's fine. We know what the value of a kilo of silver is. I know what I've paid for it, but that's not the value that they're going to take. A lot of insurance companies will value something at the cost it would take to replace it. So this, I might, you know, I might have a parcel all put together where I've done my calculations and it's adding up to £2,490 in raw silver value from what either I've paid for it or what spot prices. I mean, what calculation do you even use? And so that's kind of the first hurdle. You know, it could be valued by the insurance company differently. They could look at my stuff, they could look at my work and say, no, look, backyard bullion, you're Kilo bars go for a lot more than the silver spot price, so you've sent £3,000 worth, not £2,500, so your insurance is invalidated. So there's a whole host of different things. So be very, very careful, I guess is what I'm trying to say, about your type of insurance and whether or not it's going to be covered. It really is incredibly important. Now, I say it's incredibly important. The amount of times that a special delivery parcel goes missing completely or lost or stolen is very, very small, but it does happen. It does happen. And especially if you are making mistakes on the parcel. So now I've got out here this box and I want to talk a little bit about it. We haven't really talked about international. Uh, international insurance is slightly different. It's always a much lower amount, two, uh, 250 pounds maximum. I actually have had better experiences making claims with that side of things, but yeah, we'll talk about international perhaps another time. But for now, I want to focus on the packaging because the insurance is great and you can obviously take your own personal risks if you want to um, and send more. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. It just in invalidates any potential insurance claims that you want to do. And if you're uh, happy to take a risk on those kind of things, you of course want to best protect your parcel. And special delivery is a very secure service. It's got an incredibly low rate of completely missing or stolen. I mean, it's, we're talking minuscule percentages. I haven't done a freedom of information request on it, but. I, I've been assured that it is very, very low, and I can understand why it's a very secure service. So what can you do to potentially self, uh, or to, to save yourself from those kind of issues? Now, packaging is where I'm gonna talk about next. That is the single best thing that you can do to protect yourself. And what really irks me is when you see people sending coins, silver coins, whether, whether they be modern bullion or old, old school silver coins, just in a jiffy bag, loose, and Coins make noise, you know? Listen to that. If you have them all loose in a jiffy bag and somebody jingle jangles that, they're gonna hear it. And whilst they might know, not know exactly what it is, they're probably going to think, hang on, that's worth a potential little look. And they might well pick it up and have a look, especially if it's not special delivery. It's more likely to happen with a sign for parcel, but even a special delivery could potentially go missing. So securely internally packaging your stuff is really important. And one of the tips that I would say for any internal packaging uh, gurus out there 
if you're sending individual coins that don't come supplied in capsules, get some little plastic baggies like this, bigger ones than there are coins. I've seen some dealers use ones which are perfect size for the coin, but get bigger ones and you can easily just quickly wrap them up in there. You can squeeze the air out. That's a really easy thing to do. And then even if you've got one, it hardly makes a noise at all. If the other one was in a bag, it wouldn't make pretty much any noise at all. And then you can easily package them in whatever you're sending. I would also highly recommend that you get your hands on some hard cardboard boxes rather than jiffy bags. All too often I see people sending precious metals, coins, whatever it might be, in bags, in jiffy bags. It's just, they're just not secure. You know, a jiffy bag can be sliced open super easily and, uh, you know, you can have the contents come out. I've had a couple of parcels sent to me, not that I've uh, sent to people, come in jiffy bags and there's been obvious tampering. Obvious tampering. People have tried to get in. Unfortunately, people have sometimes double bagged and that's one option definitely, but boxes are much, much more secure. Jiffy bags you can squeeze as well and you can feel what's inside. A coin has quite a distinctive shape and it's not difficult to kind of find out exactly what's in a parcel. So definitely look to get yourself some of these. Now, what I like to do as well is when I package internally, let's just say I'm sending out this coin, I like to really make sure things are secure inside. So get yourself a bunch of bubble wrap or let, you know, whenever I buy stuff from Amazon these days, and I'm just gonna do this as an example because you can send things, uh, you know, just loose in here as well, loosey goosey with some bubble wrap and still make it nice and secure. But I get so much like leftover bubble wrap and leftover brown paper packaging, internal packaging from all of these companies, Amazon and eBay, or wherever it might be. So you can hear there, there's nothing jingle dangling. So just take that extra second to put that in and make sure that it's secure. Now, a box like this is fantastic, but you don't wanna just send it out like that. Some people I have seen, they'll just take a piece of tape, they'll put that there, close it up. Now, of course, like I've labeled my box here, BYB, I wouldn't wanna send that through the post, but I have seen then people send it like this. And again, that's not secure at all. It's secure in the sense that you can't feel what's inside it, but it just takes a couple of seconds to open it and find out what's there. And what I do, and this is the part of the sort of BYB brand. It's also like, you know, it's a nice aesthetic as well. But what I do every time is I get brown paper. Uh, this is going to be challenging doing it around my tripod. But I get my brown paper and I securely and quite tightly wrap it. And it's quite good. I've got quite, um, quite skillful at wrapping parcels now. I used to be awful at doing like Christmas presents and things. And now every year when I uh, wrap my Christmas presents, I'm always ex very, very sort of good at it, making sure they're all nice and tight. They're the best wrapped presents in the room when you wrap as many parcels as I have. It's uh, a skill that you learn quite quickly. Mrs. Backyard Bullion is also learning. She's um, not quite as tidy as me sometimes, but uh, there we go. So what I do there is I very, very securely package the outside and that is so much more tamper proof i mean they're not you're not going to get into that very quickly and if you do get into that quickly there's going to it's going to take you extra time you know this brown paper is pretty well wrapped i've put pa uh, tape all around the folds here i mean you could argue that you could put a little bit be better tape around the sides here to get these folds completely covered there's no quick way of getting in that in my opinion that is a very secure safe parcel and Again, it's very secure inside. There's a tiny bit of jingle jangle that you could hear, just a little bit. So you could do a bit better in there. I didn't obviously put each coin in a plastic bag. That would have made it even better. The next thing uh, that I always, always, always do where possible, of course, there's going to be a time constraint to these sometimes, is I'll handwrite the label. Now, that might sound a bit strange to you. Uh, I do put printed labels on sometimes, but it's when we're doing kind of bulk, bulk orders and I just can't take the time to write out. It takes so long sometimes. But personally, for me, if you're writing a hand written address, it's much more secure because the likelihood of somebody thinking, ah, that's a company, that's a company that's putting it on there. Um, and they, I just can't multitask, sorry. On the street, England, UK. And if you handwrite the, the address on there, then in my opinion, that's just a, a better option for, or better security than people thinking it's a business and it's something to steal from. A lot of people might even think that having something from a business is an easy target to sell because the business will be covered, they'll have insurance and blah, 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 whatever. It's not, in my opinion, 
that good. So handwrite your addresses, that is the most important thing. Return addresses is another thing. Do not write from Backyard Bullion or from, you know, Bullion Exchange, whatever your business is called, or if you're anything to do with precious metals, don't write that. Just put your return address, whether it's a PO box or whether it's the return address that you've got, don't put your company details on that. And that, in my opinion, is a pretty secure parcel and it's not going to draw attention, it's not going to be opened easily and people are going to get what they ordered at the other end. So that's kind of the nuts and bolts of um, that side of things. I think the most important thing you know, to remember is that it is actually quite secure to send precious metals in the post, whether it be through national postal services or whether it be through um, you know, UPS or DHL or FedEx. You've just got to be aware of the restrictions on things like insurance. So special delivery here in the United Kingdom, that is the one thing that you need to be looking at if you're sending precious metals. It really is the most cost effective way of insuring it. But obviously there are restrictions and limitations. So make sure you read through all of those as best as possible, because falling shy of them could be very expensive, especially when you're sending gold. It's always a difficult one now with gold being so High, highly valued you know before all of this if gold was anything less than 1200 pounds an ounce you could get two one ounce gold coins in a parcel and it would still be spot value underneath two and a half thousand so you think you're pretty pretty quids in at being safe and secure now though one ounce of gold is 1500 quid so that is going to be of course quite a lot over if you're sending two of them which will invalidate your insurance so have a think about it because in today's modern world and I say modern world, I mean uh, post-COVID world. The chances of you being able to walk into a bullion dealer are lower. Um, you know, a lot of these bullion dealers might not be open to the public, accessible to the public. Uh, they might not uh, just on spec be open. You could probably get in with an appointment. But again, it's not going to be that easy to travel. There could be additional restrictions being put in place. It is probably the best way. If you've got a lot of gold and silver, if you've got, you know, 20, 30 ounces of gold that you want to sell, like this chap on the, the forum did. He, he bought a house and he had 10 kilos of gold. He hand delivered that to a, uh, a bullion dealer because, of course, sending that much through the post is nigh on impossible to uh, insure. And if you are looking at get thing, getting things like that insured, it is going to be um, pretty expensive to go down the route of having sort of goods in transit insurance. I've researched it myself and it is not very good prices certainly when you're dealing with the world of precious metals they don't like it at all very very easy to target and steal these things so that said i think i've covered quite a lot of what i wanted to talk about here today that there are limitations and i think the most important one is to understand the services that you're using and whether or not they're appropriate because a lot of people don't realize that sign for delivery doesn't cover precious metals uh, international we haven't really talked about too much international tract and sign does cover precious metals i've had successful claims made on those so I've only ever had one parcel go completely missing without ever turning up. It was a very small value parcel, only about a two ounce piece of silver in there. And we got everything paid out by the Royal Mail just fine. Took a long time to do. But um, yeah, it, it, it's an interesting one, uh, I think, to think about and talk about. I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on it. So please feel free to comment down below any tips and hints and tricks that you've got or any you know warnings that you have about posting gold and silver of course one thing i haven't even talked about in certain countries it's actually against the law to post gold and silver in their national postal services i think canada is one and i think ireland is another and i suspect there are others out there as well um but yeah i mean it's a very interesting topic so see you down in the comment section for a fun and healthy debate if you liked this video you know what to do put a thumbs up on it and share it around on your social media otherwise that is it from me today thank you one and all for watching have a fantastic week ahead and as always please make sure that you like share comment and subscribe for more